What you guys got another video here for you. This one's all about root kits and how we can remove them and get the system back up to a working state where we can work with it. Now as you can see this is a Windows 7 operating system. It's got a root kit on the system. It's not letting me boot up and it's giving me some sort of fatal error message up the top there which is like sort of telltale signs there's something going on there. Now also you may get black screens with a little tiny cursor up there or you may get redirects when you're on the desktop all sorts of different scenarios happen with rootkits, they're really nasty stuff and it's best to remove them as soon as possible. Now sometimes nuking and paving or formatting the system is the only answer but I'm going to show you a way how to rewrite the master boot record here because I know there's a master boot record uh, rootkit on here and I want to remove that. Now you can use Windows CDs but we're going to be using Hiren's boot CD to rewrite that and I'll show you how to do that. So let's reboot up to Hiren's okay so I've got my CD into the CD drive now and what I'm going to do is come down to DOS programs and hit that then I want to come down to number 9 here where it says next this is the one I want to click on next and up the top here you'll see number 1 master boot, re uh, master boot record uh, tools MBR so I want to go here and click on that now you can use whatever you like I would suggest you try and use Windows CDs because they're much more better to use but if you haven't got a Windows CD I'm going to show you a way around it by using this method so we're going to be using MBR work in this case now you can use whatever you like as I said MBR wizard or whatever you like but I'm going to be using this one so I'm going to click enter here I'm going to let that load in this is all automated so you don't have to touch nothing just let it do its thing and once that's uh, loaded up you'll get the master boot record partition information now what we want to do here is we've got some options down the bottom and I want number 5 which says install standard MBR code so I'm going to push number 5 and then push enter now we give us a couple of more little options down the bottom which says uh, which MBR code base do I want to use number 1 which is standard or number 2 which is Windows 7 well obviously this is a Windows 7 operating system so we want number 2 if you're using XP you'll be using number one so I'm going to be going to number two here push enter and it'll ask me I'm not sure that I want to do that I'm going to say why for yes and push enter now that's done so what we need to do here is push E to exit and reboot the system okay, so we let the system boot up here now you will get this this uh, screen and the reason for that is because the systems crashed or something like that and all we need to do here is push start windows normally okay so we'll let this load in now okay so that's now back to the desktop and as you can see we now have access to the computer which means we can run scans you may still get error messages popping up like this one which is saying Windows has recovered from an unexpected shutdown that's because we had uh, a rootkit on the system and it shut the system down so you can read this and keep that for later reading you may also get pop-ups like this and this is because we've had problems with the system with rootkits and it may have stopped the uh, network from running as in host process and stuff like that so you might not be able to get on the internet I'm going to show you how to get around all this sort of stuff uh, by removing it by using malwarebytes and stuff like that and that will help you sort of get back up and running so first off I'm going to close these off have a little quick look with Gma here I'm going to say yes to this and let Gma run making sure there is nothing else left that's running on the system also want to run uh, TDSS killer as well while that's running and I just want to make sure there is nothing else that's running on the system that's sort of making the system slow or something like that rootkit wise make sure I've got everything okay so there's nothing there that's a good sign we've cleaned that off 
and you can also use programs like this. this is another good tool to use to check if you're if you've got access to the desktop if you've got access to the internet as well you can click yes here this is what I'd advise you to do yes to this part and hopefully get some download okay so let's not let me uh, download anything there so let me try that again and I'm just gonna do no to there and run a quick scan just to make sure there's nothing there now what you can do is check um, the services and stuff that's another thing that you can do with rootkits and you can see there's a little yellow triangle down the bottom here which says no network and the reason for that is because the rootkit has damaged something or turned something off okay so I'm gonna let this run and TDSS killer it's important that we make sure there's no more rootkits or anything on the system because as you can see we've got no network a good thing to do here is run malware bytes and this will clear off any other stuff that's on the system I also want to check um, system 32 and places like that because this is going to be where a lot of stuff is uh, lurking and uh, drivers folder we can check all those manually as well as using software now if I look in system 32 here and look at date modified I can come down and I can see stuff that's been changed and this file here I can see is a new file that looks dodgy very rarely see files looking like that there's another one that looks a, a bit dodgy so what you want to do is always check this area and you can go through this with a fine tooth comb and uh, root out any stuff that you you know that's a bit suspect and there is other folders to look for but I'm not going to go through those today so malware bytes let's have a little run with that now if you can't update don't worry try to run a quick scan with what you've got at least it will try and free up a lot of stuff okay you can see it's not online so I'm going to run a quick scan here hopefully this will clear up a lot of the issues now there is a way of getting malware bytes and all the latest definitions downloaded on from another computer and keeping them on a on a USB drive and you can use those so there we can see we've got 16 objects already okay so that scans now finished and we have 30 results there to look at I'm gonna click OK here and show the results and as you can see here some nasty stuff on there some worm there auto run rootkit dropper okay we've got some other stuff here stuff in the recycle bin which is not a big problem but I can see that one there we was looking at we said it was suspect you can see uh, endis dot sys um, is on there as well which is on uh, some sort of form of rootkit which is probably going to be got TDSS there it's probably remnants of the other file Allurian as well there so what we'll do here is remove these some of them are in the recycle which I'm not too worried about we'll get rid of those as well I'm going to reboot the system now just let this boot in okay so that's now loaded up as you can see we're pretty much at the desktop now and everything's loading up nicely hopefully the internet is going to be now working and fixed and we've got now internet access I can see down there so let's just try that now I'll just try and then we have internet access which is good we're back up and running there and it just goes to show you from a from a complete non bootable machine we've gone from non bootable machine back to a desktop and now we can run some more exa um, scans and start to make sure that everything is is clean and I would go through numerous different scans uh, and find out whether there's anything else left on the system 
uh, run this scan and also update malware bytes and do another scan to make sure we've got all the latest definitions which is important because we couldn't do this before so it's important to get the latest definitions and then run another scan to make sure that there is nothing else left and because the system was um, infected pretty badly I would do a full scan on this one and then I'd use CCleaner to clean off any remnants and then empty the restore points and uh, create a new restore point and then that should be us back up and running it's always handy to do an online scan with something like ESET as well just to make sure the system's running clean and uh, that should be it again I think that's about it for this video so I'd let this run, run some scans, make sure everything's all nice and clean. But as you can see, the system is running uh, pretty much normal now. We have cleaned off a lot of the stuff, and that's really important. So don't always go for the format method. Have a little play with it, see if you can sort of resolve the issue. Think outside the box, and uh, hopefully you should be able to get that system back up and running in a nice, clean working order. Okay, so I hope you enjoy these videos. My name is Brian from brightech.co.uk. If you enjoyed these videos, please remember guys, hit that subscribe button and show your support. Also rate and favourite all my videos if you enjoy them. And I'll be making more videos again in the future, so stick around. So I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.